Asanteni sana. Tafadhali tiketi. <clears throat> Mr. Deputy President, Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, the Right Reverend. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that is the new, I had somebody else say it. <laughs> and uh, I thought because he is Papa Waroma, maybe he now qualifies. The Right Honorable Speaker of uh, Senate, um, former speakers, uh, leaders, uh, le house leadership, commissioners, members of parliament, members of uh, Former members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, coming to parliament is truly a homecoming of sorts. I, uh, these uh, premises were my workplace for 15 years. And I had tremendous um, opportunity here to um, grow my leadership skills and I'm very proud of the place of parliament in the leadership of Kenya. I keep uh, telling our members of parliament especially whenever I have an occasion to engage with our parliamentary group that parliament is a very premium platform. Many people work so hard, campaign so hard, to become members of parliament either in Senate or National Assembly. And it's a great privilege to serve the people. So whenever you have an opportunity to be a member of parliament, please don't take it for granted. It is a very and that is why in my mind I have no doubt whatsoever that the resources that we have allocated for this parliament to have the requisite infrastructure capabilities for members of parliament who are the people's representatives to discharge their responsibility and mandate is actually resources very well spent. <clears throat> and that is why it is my pleasure this morning to celebrate the culmination of a highly symbolic development project, which is a significant milestone on the Kenya Parliament's historic journey of growth as a national institution of critical importance. There is no doubt that the government has invested a great deal of public resources to provide our legislators with modern and highly and high quality amenities to enable them discharge their functions. And I speak against the background laid by the Honorable Speaker here. When I was first elected as a member of parliament in 1997, 1998, there was no office for any member of parliament here. And we became the first occupants, I think, after about two years under the leadership of uh, Speaker Caparo to occupy the building um, at Continental House. And it had many challenges, but it was a great improvement from us working from our private offices or from the parking lot in our cars. And because members, you now have, according to your own admission, world-class facilities, we expect, and the people of Kenya expect, world-class representation, world-class legislation, world-class oversight. And looking at the facilities, and I tested them this morning, the committee, 
spaces in the offices themselves, you have now no reason, forget excuse, you have no reason not to give us and the people of Kenya the best of what you can do as our legislators. And I have no doubt that the quality of debate, having uh, opened the library and each member of parliament having some research people to work with, that the quality of debate, the quality of representation of legislation is going to greatly improve. And Mr. Speaker, if there is anything the Kenya government can do additionally to equip our members of parliament so that they can discharge their very central responsibility to the people of Kenya, I will spare no effort in working with you to make sure that it is done. There is no doubt that we spend huge resources here. And let me say, in other words, our employer, the people of Kenya, have gone to great lengths to implement their end of the civic contract that exists between us and them. Consequently, as members of parliament, you have a moral and constitutional obligation to reciprocate the sacrifices the people of Kenya have made by intensifying your efforts, both individually and collectively as parliament, in order to render a strong contribution to the deepening of Kenya's democracy, expanding freedoms, entrenching the rule of law, and achieving economic transformation in the responsibilities that you have. Parliament has the cardinal responsibility to make sure that the resources people of Kenya put at the disposal of government is used as it was intended, and that it is not stolen, it is not misappropriated, it is not um, uh, abused, and Parliament has a central place. And Mr. Speaker, I look forward to working with Parliament in making sure that the executive is held to account. When um, I made a commitment that members of the executive will come to parliament so that you can interrogate them, so that you can ask them questions, so that you can hold them to account. And I am very happy that that process has taken off. Mr. Speaker, I expect to see more of engagement between the executive and the legislature by way of making sure that the public is well informed of government policy by members of my executive coming to parliament to answer questions, to expose um, uh, government policy, coming to parliament to explain to members development projects and programs, coming to parliament to account for actions of my administration. I also want to say that um, you can count on our support because you have already demonstrated that every piece of legislation we bring, every piece of policy that we bring, Parliament has always gone out of its way to input, to inform, to enrich, to amend sometimes, and to make it better. I want to report to you that uh, all the programs that we brought to Parliament and um, you have graciously passed, whether it is um, the housing program, I want to report to you that 140,000 young people around Kenya today are working in our housing program, people who are not working the previous year. I also want to report to you that we are finalizing our universal health care program that has been in the works 
for the last almost 15 years. And I want to commit to Parliament that because you have given us the legislative framework, you have given us the regulatory arrangements, we will make sure that that program goes forward and benefits the people of Kenya. The biggest beneficiaries of our universal health care program are members of parliament. How so? The people in the WhatsApp groups raising money for this person and that person and the other person who has cancer, diabetes, and the other one are members of parliament. Members, I'm trying to lift this big burden from your shoulders. So let us work together. I think uh, it will be good if every citizen can walk into any health facility in Kenya and walk away without making a phone call to a member of parliament to pay their bill. It would be a most important thing. This building, ladies and gentlemen, therefore, is a towering monument of every citizen's legitimate expectation that in return for their unstinting support, their leaders will apply themselves in a responsible, conscientious, patriotic, accountable, and honest manner to protect, uphold, and enhance the security, freedom, and prosperity of every citizen of the Republic of Kenya. In conceptualizing and building Bunge Towers, Parliament and the Executive were able to collaborate effectively and deliver a project of such magnitude in exemplary harmony. This building therefore symbolizes the power, partnership, and cooperation between arms of government to solve large-scale problems, transcend challenges, and achieve monumental positive impacts. It is an excellent demonstration that the bottom-up economic transformation agenda will be implemented on time if every arm of government give it, gives it a chance, and if we are able to reach out in the spirit of goodwill, solidarity, and commitment to the values that unite all of us, irrespective of our political persuasions, regions, faiths, and other considerations. This building is not a monument to extravagance or grandeur in the service of vanity. It is not intended to symbolize entitlement or impunity in the sense of the ability of legislators to appropriate and expend public resources without account accountability. That is not what it is. Rather, it should be a symbol of our sense of public duty, constitutional obligation, national values, and devotion to the national interest. When you look at this building and the magnificence of this building, it should remind you that you have a constitutional responsibility to the people who elected you and to the great country that we all belong. Therefore, Parliament is an institution or as an institution has no choice but to rise to the new era inaugurated by the opening of the Punge Towers and deliver rigorous, effective, and consistent representation, legislation, and oversight. This moment in the history of our social, economic, and political development demands much higher standards from our national institutions, especially parliament. We are gathered here to affirm our capacity to deliver this institutional quality and signal to Kenyans that henceforth there will be no excuses for poor, negligent, or unattentive performance. And as has been said here by members who have spoken, there is now no more reason for extra resources to travel to hotels and to places. I don't know whether that is true. Now that we have all the facilities here, the um, meeting rooms, committee meeting rooms, 
uh, I hope I will see a significant drop, Mr. Speaker, in the budget of Parliament. Yeah? It, it must reflect somewhere. You, you, you guys have just said yourselves. Yeah? <laughs> And the test of the eating is in the, in the, of the pudding is in there. Yeah, so as you appropriate uh, the next budget, just rem, 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 remember that Parliament does not now need money to go to hotels, and therefore the budget should come down. I am confident that every member of Parliament is up to the task and can deliver beyond expectations. I have no hesitation, therefore, in expressing my very strong expectation that this and future parliaments will satisfy our nation's demand for excellent service from its public servants. I wish you all success as you serve the nation from your new offices in Bunge Towers and look forward to a stronger, positive collaboration in actualizing the aspiration of the people of Kenya. I also want to tell you, as a former member of parliament, that I know and I understand uh, the challenges that we all face as leaders, and progressively we must work in collaboration together to overcome those challenges and to better serve the people of Kenya. Let me persuade you on three very important things. Yesterday evening, I had a discussion with the CEO of um, National government, national government and GCDF, Mr. Mbuno. And my discussion was with him was on the subject of ICT hubs. Because I had an engagement with the chair of ICT, uh, my good friend John Kiarie and his team. And we agreed that the same way, by God's grace, we have jobs it is our responsibility to work together to find opportunities for employment for other Kenyans. And one of the spaces in which we can create those opportunities is in the ICT space. I want to thank Parliament for amending the NCGTF Act so that today we can use resources under that program in developing ICT hubs. When I saw that that program was not moving, I looked for the people concerned, and I'm very happy that this morning I did instruct both the PS and the CS for ICT and NGCDF to have a meeting and conclude the challenges that were there so that members of parliament can roll out ICT hubs across Kenya and provide opportunities for employment in our digital job framework for millions of the people we represent and who elected us. It is my expectation that um, in the next three to four months, ICT hubs should be up and running in every ward in Kenya. And I want to persuade members of parliament to work with us on this program. The other program that I want to persuade you on uh, us working together is the program on export of labor. We are currently working on bilateral labor agreements. And I want my good friend uh, Mushangi, uh, AKA Karemba, to work with my ministry and your committee so that we can conclude on the um, bilateral labor agreements with your input and support so that we can provide a framework for more Kenyans to find job opportunities across borders. It is my intention that in the next five to seven years, we should increase our diaspora remittances from $4 billion to $10 billion. It is doable and it will go a long way in making sure that more and more Kenyans have incomes that support the growth of our economy. Members, you are the ones who appropriate public resources. You know very well that we spend 650 billion shillings every year for the education 
of our children. If we are spending 650 billion, we must also think about how do we get value from this investment of 650 billion. We must think about the people who come out of that investment. How do we monetize their knowledge, their talents, their expertise, their skills, and use it to drive the economy of our country and the progress of our nation. And that is why we have to be intentional, we have to be deliberate, and I'm very happy that I'm speaking to a body of the highest leadership of the Republic of Kenya, that as you people appropriate those resources, let's also think about the output. How do we create opportunities for employment? And that is why I'm very, very proud that yesterday, Parliament finally ratified the Economic Partnership Agreement that will now give us a framework for enterprise, business, exports, trade between Kenya and the EU, 27 countries of the EU. I also uh, want to tell you that as you were passing the Economic Partnership Agreement, yesterday again we were concluding another agreement with our friends of the UAE, again to provide expanded framework for business, for entrepreneurship, for trade between our countries. And I'm very happy that when we concluded that meeting yesterday, we got an offer, first offer of $500 million of 70 billion Kenyan shillings to support our programs as we build greater synergy and networks to support our economy. And later, today, we will be having another engagement with American companies under the Amchan program, again to um, better expand our frameworks, especially that will provide Kenya with investment opportunities, especially in our special economic zones and export uh, processing zones. I was with my friend uh, King Ola, uh, in Athi River, and I made a commitment that uh, with a new uh, traction and momentum we have created, by next year we will have an extra 20,000 jobs in Athi River EPZ. This is what we must do deliberately, intentionally, because we have a huge backlog of millions of young people out of school, out of college, out of university, who expect us to create opportunities for, for them through government intervention, government programs, and us providing an environment for the private sector to create jobs for our young people. Um, let me conclude by saying that, um, again, we have we thank God we have rains in Kenya. Because of the rains and all the other plants we have made, um, we've managed to grow our agricultural sector. And we are making progress in making sure that we reduce the cost of living by making sure that we do what we have to do to support our farmers. But even as we get the blessing of the rains, we also have seen floods in different parts of our country. Many Kenyans are going through difficult times. Yesterday in the morning, uh, I had engagement with counties that are facing this challenge. We have mobilized the National Youth Service. We've mobilized our military. Members of the national government um, are uh, working with the counties in collaboration to support um, those in distress we have provided from our Ministry of uh, Special Programs food and other amenities to support those in need. This morning, I have authorized the National Youth Service to provide land for those people who are living dangerously in some of the areas 
for them to be moved from those areas into some safe ground as we decide on what to do with them next. Um, shortly, I will be having another emergency session with uh, our multi-agency teams to make sure that we provide adequate support to all those in need and to move citizens who are in dangerous areas that may be susceptible to floods away from those areas. And unfortunately, we will have to move some of them uh, even without them agreeing because otherwise they put themselves in danger. Um, the Deputy President will be having a meeting tomorrow with all the other actors, including our development partners, to facilitate greater um, collaboration to deal with this challenge. And I want to ask members of parliament in their respective constituencies. I managed to talk to a few yesterday. I've talked to some governors yesterday. For all of us to have a whole of government approach, a whole of society approach in supporting those in need. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have a chance to deliver for Kenyan's economic transformation that leaves no one behind. No man, woman, or child, wherever they live or work, and whatever their gender of faith, must be part of our equation. We must remind ourselves of this duty to look out for every citizen at all times. It's now my pleasure to declare the Bunga Towers officially open. Thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless our great country. Asante sana.